I have a wire, <coughs> a D cell battery, and a flashlight bulb. find out today what is necessary to light a light bulb. To do that we have a D-cell battery, a piece of wire, and a flashlight bulb. If you have these devices at home you can try it there too. First we're going to try to light the bulb by connecting the positive end of the battery to the bottom of the bulb. First we're going to put the end of the wire on the positive end of the battery and the other end of the wire on the bottom of the bulb, that doesn't work. Next, we're going to try to connect the bottom of the battery, the negative end of the battery, let's try this side, the negative end of the battery to the bottom of the bulb. Try the negative side of the battery to the bottom of the bulb and again, the bulb does not light. No luck there either. Next, we'll try to connect the negative and positive, whoops, it's already getting hot, negative and positive sides of the battery and put the bulb on top. Next, we're going to try putting the wire from the negative side to the positive side of the battery and the bulb on top, and still no luck, the bulb doesn't light, but one thing we notice here is the wire gets very hot. If you do that at home, don't connect it that way very long or you'll ruin your battery. Finally, let's do the thing that works. Put one end of the wire on the negative side of the battery, put the flashlight bulb on the top, of the battery and touch the other end of the wire to the metallic side of the bulb. And we need to find out why that works. Why does the light bulb light? Well, it forms a complete circuit and we need to know how that works. To know how that works, we need to show uh, the wiring inside the light bulb. We need to know how to make a complete circuit to make the light bulb light. Part of that is finding out how the light bulb itself is wired. On the light bulb, there's a metallic part around the sides here, and there's a conductor on the bottom here. But those two pieces are insulated from each other. Inside the bulb, there's a wire that goes from the side of the bulb up to the filament and down to the bottom. To see how that works to make a complete circuit, we need to show the case where the bulb did light. We brought the wire from down here to the metallic side of the bulb. The battery is designed to separate positive and negative charges. Positive charges are up here, negative charges down here, and those charges would like to do nothing better than to get back together again, but they can't get back together again inside the battery. So we've given those charges a path so those negative charges can come out this, through here, up through the bulb, and down into the battery. have a complete circuit for our closed circuit. Why did the light bulb not light in our first case? Let's draw that. We have what's called an open circuit. The, uh, there's not a complete path for the charges to flow. You can have a charge flow in here. Well. <laughs> There's not a complete path for the charges to flow. You could have a charge flow here and into the bulb and to the side.
side, but there's no way for it to get back to the battery. So it's an open circuit, not a complete circuit, and the uh, bulb does not light. Why does the bulb not light on the second example? Well, in that example, we had the wire going along here, and then the bulb connect here. Negative charge, again, can flow out of the battery, but it flows directly back into the positive end of the battery, and the path does not go through the light bulb at all. So since no electricity goes through the light bulb, the light bulb does not light. Since this wire provides a very low resistance to the flow of electricity, there's a large current, and the wire heats up. That's called a short circuit.